Alhamdulillah, As-salamu alaykum. Amen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Kathiran. Alhamdulillah, Ala Kadiha. I seek refuge in Allah from, uh, from misleading and from being misled, from betraying and being betrayed into ignorance by others. I ask Allah to guide my heart and to guide my tongue. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of us to have a, a look that is merciful, a heart that is enlightened, a tongue that is truthful, a knowledge that is useful, and a conduct and a character that Allah is pleased with. And may he have mercy on all of us and raise us in the company of the righteous. So, um, man, um, shukran. I mean, really, thank you all. Like, I had no idea, man, um, about Australia. And it's so beautiful to be traveling and to just see Muslims. And I see a lot of youth, you know, here. Um, Islam, man, I promise y'all, from, even from being in Hollywood, there is nothing like Islam. Islam, you were like, we just lined the ranks upon ranks and made salat, and everybody is focused about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is so beautiful. Like, I mean, I, that's one thing, the message that I want to share just, you know I mean, like the Sheikh was speaking about, some, we have dreams of being big Hollywood actors and stuff like that, and we don't really understand what we have in Islam. And I promise y'all, this Islam is the most beautifulest thing, man. It, may, it makes you feel good. It really do. It makes you get closer to Allah. You are, Allah is the greatest, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made man great when we know Allah. We're able to do some spectacular things. You know, we, it's, please, don't take it for granted. Please, you make your salat, man. I, I promise you, the only thing that saved me in Hollywood was salat. The only thing that saved me in Hollywood was salat. And I'm only grateful to Allah that he made me make salat. You know, because Allah talks about some people, he don't even allow them to make a lot. But I've done, I've had some experiences in Hollywood, man, that I was doing, I'm going to tell you one of, the, one of the stories. I was doing this MTV show. Y'all know MTV, right? I was doing this MTV show, and uh, because I had the background in rapping and singing, that, you know, I, I was doing uh, rapping and singing on the MTV and uh, it was something like karaoke. And I had made Salat al-Zur. We was there all day. I made Salat al-Zur on time. But I made it like I was afraid to make Salat in front of everybody. So I would hide in the back and I'd get my chair and I would pray, you know, off to myself in the corner where people wouldn't really know what I was doing. So I made Salat al-Zur like that on time. And I made Salat al-Asr like that on time. And then Salat al-Maghrib came in. And Salat al-Maghrib, they came and they got me right before I could make Salat al-Maghrib. And if we know, Salat al-Maghrib has like a very short window. So they come and they got me, and now I was scared because something, I was like, oh man, I want to do this show, but now I'm, I'm about to do this show and I'm going to miss Salat. And I was just thinking like, oh, oh Allah, I didn't know what to do. I didn't have the strength to be like, no, I'm going to pray. Let me pray first. I didn't have the strength to do that. And I was walking with them. It's a bunch of them. They got the director, camera guy. Everybody is just walking like, you know. And I'm like, okay, ya Allah. I just said to Allah myself. I said, oh Allah, have mercy on me. I want to do the show, but I don't want to miss a lot. I don't know what to do. Just being real. When we got up to the point of the stage, the guy did just like this. What'd you say? Hmm? Okay, hold on. Omar, can you sit down one second? We forgot to get another shot of the other people. And I said, SubhanAllah, I sat down and I made salat right there in the chair. And as soon as I said, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullah, the guy come over to me. Hey, Omar, that alone taught me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer your dua. Allah will help you. Even if you've been making mistakes or you're inside of a, an environment, 
it was a growth period for me to understand how, you know, what Allah says in the Quran, that if you call upon me, I will answer you. <clears throat> so I'll start tripping, like, wow, I cannot believe Allah blessed me to be able to make Maghrib. Even though I, I believe that Allah was not pleased with the song that I was singing. <clears throat> I'll tell you, I was singing this song, man, subhanAllah, may Allah forgive me. Um, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it got worse because I won the show. <laughs> but I was, you know what I mean, I'm still learning, you know. It's just little things like that that happen inside in Hollywood that really reaffirm the fact that it's not about you being a Hollywood actor or it's not about you being, you know, somebody famous. Famous, honestly, the celebrities, if you get a chance to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, they don't like it. They don't like, it's too much. You just really want to be about yourself. This whole thing that they, you know what I mean, they sell it. They use it as a marketing tool, but it's not, a, it's not something that you really, really, really want to be. The attention that you get from it, it's not that big of a deal. It really is more cons than pros. And they, if you talk to them, you see them, you're like, man, I'm tired. I just want to live a normal life, really. And this is why a lot of them are unhappy. So I want to tell you that when you look in, I also, oh, I got to tell you this too. I'm sorry. I got to tell you this. We all know Beyonce, right? I know y'all do. I was so excited to meet Beyonce. I'm backstage. I'm with all of these people. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, man, I'm backstage. SubhanAllah, man. When I saw her, I was so let down. I promise. The hype. We fought the hype and the excitement. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. To be honest, when I saw her, I was like, wow. This is, that's who? What? <laughs> it's whack. It really is. I promise y'all, it's not what you think. It's not at all what you think in Hollywood. Everything is so glamorous on the television and the hype behind it. But when the cameras is not rolling, it's really whack. <laughs> and you'd be looking like, man, that's so messed up. And I could see the Muslimas with the hijab. I'm not even trying to trick you. I'm not trying to, I promise you, they are more beautiful than the Beyonce's and the Christina Aguilera's, really. Because what you see when the sister has a hijab she reminds you of a law, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you can already be modest and check yourself. When you see them, it's fake. Fake hair, it's fake eyes, it's fake eyelashes, it's fake body part. Nothing is real. It's all made up. And inside of us, shaitan be just using it like, yeah, man, this is the best thing. That's what you want. That's what you want. You really want something that's not real? You mean, I mean, really, you think about it, like, why would you just want people to be like, oh, that's, here's this beautiful cake, it's, but it's made out of plastic, but it look good. <laughs> I don't want that, man. You know what I mean? It's no benefit in it. It's just no, it's no benefit in it. Well, and I'm not bashing on Beyonce and them. I'm just trying to tell you about this Hollywood scene, how... Hollywood versus Islam. I've been traveling. It's the first time that I'm here in Australia. I've been traveling and I get the strength every time. I don't know you personally, but I can feel you because we all have this common thing. Allah makes salat. La ilaha illallah. We all have a consciousness. And it's just beautiful that we don't have to be each other. Like you guys. You're not looking at me like, oh, Omar is a celebrity. Because I'm not. I'm just Muslim, just like you. I'm just Muslim. And I'm, I guarantee you that half of you have more beautiful stories, challenging stories, just like me. So we all in this thing together. We all the same. We all strengthen each other. You know, we all, I mean, honestly, we just hold tight with one another, just like Allah says in the Quran. We don't look at each other's differences and each other's levels and where they are and we just like man alhamdulillah I'm glad you're here at the masjid that's what that's what we're supposed to be you're here at the masjid you could be somewhere else 
You know, you could be doing so many different other things. But we hear and we make it so loud. May Allah accept us. You know, and that's, you know, something I want to share. I do. Coming out of, well, I mean, and my goal now, let me tell you, my goal is to, I really want to do good. I understand for all of us, our responsibility, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it says in the Quran that he have made man in charge of the earth, vice generants on the earth. We are in charge of the earth. So we have to make this place better. We not like everybody else, being that we're Muslim. So we can't act like everybody else. You know what I mean? I can't act like I'm Hollywood and, yes, bring my tea. Ha, ha, ha. You know what I mean? I can't act like that. What is this? You know what I mean? When the character of the Prophet Islam was, he was the prophet chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sitting there with direct messages from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, he wasn't even celebrity, if you will. He wasn't a celebrity, anybody, you know. But I mean, in my opinion, he would have been the best fit to call himself a celebrity since, you know, I mean, he made, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him and he made the mi'raj and everything. But he said, even I don't know what will become of me. And he's carrying wood. And he's working just like everybody else. He didn't put himself high above. And that's the thing that I love about Islam. Because Islam teaches you that you are just like everybody else. Everybody is created from a, from a congealed drop of blood. From a despicable fluid where we come from. From something that's gross to a... You know what I mean? It's that's where we all come from, and now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala have made us into something and given us the ability to think, see, talk, and then we all of a sudden we start thinking that we all that in a bag of chips. Now we start thinking that yeah, yeah, I'm me, I'm me, I'm this, I'm that, I'm tough, and that's not what it's about, man. And that's Hollywood. It's all hype. Hollywood is hype. Islam. Islam is love. Islam is love, is comforting. Salat, spiritual strengthening. And I mean, I talk about these things because I mean, I'm experiencing it. And if you youngsters, please believe me. The streets, the streets, man, please, don't waste your time You're trying to be hard. Look at TV. I'm telling you, the cameras is rolling. They not hard. They scared. They have bodyguards and bulletproof vests and all kind of stuff. But I could sound real good on TV. Yeah, I dare somebody step up to me. I sound hard. I sound real gangster. But I'm not really gangster. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gangster. That's not, that's not the look. That's not the image. Because you are more powerful as a Muslim being confident to say you're a Muslim when nobody wants to hear it, when, you, when it's hard to say it. Just with your strength in the side of this ayah, forgive me, it's on my iPod, I don't want to turn it out, because I'm still studying, but I got caught up on this ayah inside the Quran that Allah says that he put an angel before us and an angel behind us. As Muslim, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be anything else. You know what I mean? We don't have to be a gangster. We don't have to be a celebrity. We don't have to be famous. We don't have to, the love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he told the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, when I love somebody, I call out to Angel Jibreel, and I say, oh, Angel Jibreel, I love so-and-so. This is Sahih Hadith, Sahih Muslim, Sahih Bukhari. He says, I love so-and-so, so you too love him. And then Angel Jibreel says, he go to the rest of the angels and say, oh, angels. Let me, for example, what's your name? Kusai. Huh? Oh, I love, Allah loves Kusai. So you too love Kusai. And so then the angel, the angel, all the rest of the, after the angel Jibril tells the rest of the angels, then angel Jibril calls out to the earth. And he says, Oh earth, Allah loves Kusai. So you too love Kusai. And you are met with love 
from the creation, from all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the trees, from the wind, from the water. This is powerful, man. I'm telling you, it's powerful. It's also the other side. When Allah don't like you, then he call out. I don't like him. We won't use Qusay in that. It was, we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to always love Qusay. But just, you know what I mean, for references, you know, it's the same, vice versa. So we want to make sure that we are getting that love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to do whatever we can do so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can say he love us. That's powerful. Our power in that is to know that all power belongs to Allah. And when you walk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his protection. It's just, it's real. It's not like the stories inside of the Quran. The stories inside of the Quran is not there for us to just, yeah, I read that surah. Oh, yeah, that's the story of Moses. Yeah, oh, the story of Yusuf. It's motivation. It's for motivation to let you know of what happened before. I said that one of the sheikhs was sharing with me. He said, do you understand the reason why these stories is inside of the Quran? He said, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was motivating Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was motivating him, telling him of what happened to people before that really believed. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them victorious how he still continued to bless them. He tried them and how he blessed them and what was the end result. So he gave them these stories and he relate these stories and now we still have the same stories to motivate us to stay good, period. Stay good, stay firm on faith, stay, Allah got you. If Allah is with you, I mean, there's nothing that anybody can say, do, to harm you or cause you any pain. And this is what we got to remember. We got to get that through ourself. Because, I mean, our minds be working. But we have to understand, nobody can harm you unless Allah say they can harm you. So it's not about the person that's harming you. I need to find out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote that. I got to go to the source. The source. If I'm mad, if I'm upset, I need to go to the source. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please forgive me. Make me not be upset. Make me not be mad. Make me better so that you don't cause me that have to go through trial after trial. Because we go through trial after trial so that we can learn. And the reason why a lot of us go through trial after trial so we can learn is because we're not paying attention to what happened before. When the wise man said that a wise person or wisdom is a person who learned from other people's mistakes. Why are we going to turn around and make the same mistakes as everybody else making? Why I got to follow in the same footsteps of Jay-Z or Kanye before I understand Allah is the greatest? Before I understand, it's not about me showing off. Before I understand that, why do I have to do that? They already made this mistake for me. I don't have to make the same mistake. I'm supposed to elevate from that so that I can be able to hopefully pull them up. In Muslim, in Islam, we don't, we don't disown nobody. We care about everybody. Like the Prophet wasallam. We want to pull and say the Prophet wasallam said, if you've seen hell, you wouldn't want nobody to go there. Nobody. Even the person that we think we so mad at. The one we think we can't stand. Something inside of our hearts is inclined to care for each other, regardless. And think about it. If you see a car accident, your first response is not, are they Muslim? Your first response is, to, ah, I got to help. Somebody is hurting. Your first response is to help. That's who we are. And we have to continue to be those people, to be the ones that remind other people of who they are. We have to lead by example. So, alhamdulillah, you know, inside of whatever skill that Allah blessed you to have. Allah has blessed me. I'm grateful to have a skill. And I pray that Allah, that I use it for good. Because in every skill that Allah give us, we can use it for bad. It can either take us to, 
Jannah or Jahannam. Either way, even if it's a good skill, even if it's not any ikhtilaf, like, like magic, he does tiling. He can use his tiling and doing floors for the wrong reasons. Painting, you can paint for the wrong reasons. You can act, you can be a comedian for the wrong reason. It's very challenging. Now, alhamdulillah, I'm do comedy. I didn't start out doing halal comedy. I call it halal comedy and Muslim Muslims be like, hmm? How is this halal comedy? Yani, I don't know, yani. But it's a, I, I call it because now I wanted to make sure that everything that I say has to be good. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says that the person who lies to make people laugh will have a seat in Jahannam. So we can't lie even when we joke. And it was one of the times when the hadith, when the, the lady come to the Prophet, it was an elderly lady, she come to the Prophet, and then uh, she said, would there be old people, uh, will there, you know I mean? No, she asked the question, will she be in Jannah? Would the elderly be in Jannah? And the Prophet said, there's no, no, no old people will be in Jannah. And she walked away, she was crying, and they had to go back to the Prophet. So Islam was like, Messenger of Allah, she crying, she upset. He was like, oh no, call her back. I was just, you know what I mean? He was telling the truth. He said, I was just joking that you would be young again in Jannah. You know, you're going to make it. And I was like, wow, if I could kind of be strategic like that in my writing to try to remind people about Allah and remind people to be good and do good, then I can call it halal. Mm, bismillah. So this is how I started to go to work and to try to use it in a way where I can give da'wah to non-Muslims. And uh, I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I've been moving around and um, giving da'wah. And most non-Muslims, man, subhanAllah, they have, they've joined me. I started this tour about, because we have this thing, I don't know, have y'all heard of Islamophobia? Well, they made up a word over in America. <laughs> And about people that are scared of Muslims. They got a phobia about Muslims. Oh, they're Muslims. You know, they have that. I don't know where it comes from. It's crazy, but uh, they have it now. And uh, the word is in going into the dictionary. Yeah. And it's a big deal. You can teach it in classrooms. Islamophobia, you know. And uh, I said, wow, they, they have, we have joined this team because it's non-Muslims that don't agree with Islamophobia also. And it's called Fanatical Comedy Tour. You could see it, Fanatical. It's Muslim, Christian, and Jew. Muslim, Christian, Jew that's coming together to try to make a difference. But guess what? It's all spearheaded by Muslims. It's all spearheaded by Muslims. And now the non-Muslims is joining us in the effort to remind people to be good people, to have good character. That example alone has me tell you guys, listen, the gangsters that you see or that you know or the youth that might want to, you know, be Lil Wayne, please don't want to be Lil Wayne. Please. I mean, I'm serious, man. Do, do, do not want to be Lil Wayne. Make dua for Lil Wayne. That Allah guide Lil Wayne. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what I have to do. You know, I don't want to be, I, I impersonate different Hollywood actors and in my mind, I make them Muslim. You know what I mean? It's what we're going to be doing Monday night with the halal comedy. I, um, I talk about Chris Tucker. Was Chris Tucker's Muslim? You know? And I, I said, imagine if he was Muslim. And he would, it's not like a man. <laughs> you know? It's all for Allah. It's all for Allah. It's what we need to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is what we'll be doing. We're going to do this Monday. Alhamdulillah, and now I'm going to make, you know, I have some other, like Elmo, we're going to make Elmo Muslim, you know, was, that's what the, what the comedy is all about, you know, Elmo, Elmo be Muslim, Chris Tucker be Muslim, even I tell people, imagine if, before Allah took him, some people say he had Shahada, I don't know, uh, Michael Jackson, imagine if he had, was Muslim, and what we, things we can do, this is how the comedy, what I talk about in the comedy. And then I talk about the, my different experiences as a Muslim. And I travel. And alhamdulillah, we have fun. 
but then we also teach. You see, and that's how, you know, I call it halal comedy, just to introduce the halal comedy. And uh, make dua that, I, that Allah accepts it, that it's good, you know, because the intention for it to be good. And then to be inspiring and to have a balance between fun and, and uh, how do you say, what's the balance? You have fun, but then you also teach at the same time. Not like I'm a teacher or nothing like that. I don't want to be that, like that. But, you know, I mean, just to have some da'wah and to have fun and invite people. Be, become more inviting to Islam. Have a character that people can approach you. You know, people always say, I wanted to talk to Muslims, but I was scared to approach them because, you know, they was seem so serious or you know they, he had this frown on his face you know? sometimes Muslims we do sometimes we just be in deep thought thinking about the day but then some people come by like oh that Muslim here Islamophobia he's angry <laughs> I know I know they don't understand man we people too we have things that go on in our life you know we frown and we smile so I mean, just getting all of that stuff out there. Inshallah, if you can, come out Monday night. Oh, good, good. He has all the information um, about Monday night, inshallah, if you can. And then, and if you see something wrong, um, keep it to yourself. <laughs> and make dua. And the reason why I said that, I said that because it's so many times that we focus on the wrong than seeing the value of the right or what I might think is wrong or not the best. I would say make dua because in all of us we all have uh, by the permission of Allah we have good intentions. We have good intentions and the strength of the brotherhood to keep you up is so beneficial because, man, I tell you, it's so discouraging as a Muslim and being in Hollywood to have everybody come up to me, haram, 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 boom, boom, boom. I just get beat up, man. I feel like I've been playing rugby. <laughs> and I don't even know how to play. I'm scared to play rugby. Oh, something else. <laughs> I was like, well, watching it on YouTube. But it feels like that. But what's more encouraging is when you come and you be like, oh, man, alhamdulillah, I have an idea. Omar, maybe if you can say this instead of this, this might be more beneficial. Then I feel like we're on the same team. It's more uplifting. Instead of the other one, haram, haram, get out of here. Don't come back. Because, you know, I mean, I'm like, oh, no, I don't want that. I want to do good. You know what I mean? I want to do good. And I think even in that, from all of us at the same time, even as youth, for some of the elders, I want to say that to you, too, from the youth, and we kind of different now. I mean, I'm, I don't I mean, I guess I could still say I'm youth, but I got an 18-year-old son with me, so he's more youth than me. Alhamdulillah. Um, but it's, we kind of different now, from what I've been paying attention to. We don't take, we kind of soft, if you will. Now, 2011 and 2012, the youth, we kind of soft, more soft. We need a little bit more sensitivity. I don't know if that's a good thing. I pray it is. But, you know what I mean? We just need a little bit more of a hug than that tough love. And we grew up with a lot, with a lot of tough love. But the world, the dunya, is tough already. It's tough. Then you imagine, I can imagine you youngsters going to school. My kids go to school. They go to public school. Some of you Muslims go to public school. It's tough to hear all of this hate about Muslims and you know better. And people, you just really want them to understand and want them to get it, but they don't. And they have formed this, their own mind. I'm telling y'all, it's tough. And even for the Muslims, they wear, they're on the front line. I mean, because, I mean, I got my hoodie on, I got my little beanie, but you wouldn't tell that, you wouldn't know automatically that I'm Muslim unless I told you. But to see a Muslima in hijab, she's on the front line all the time. All the time. And it's tough. It's really tough. And our expectations, you know, instead, when they come home, then when they come home, all right, we beat them up. What did you just do? Why did you say this? Why did you do that? We forgot. She's already been beat up in the dunya every 
time just from people looking at her and tapping on each other. Look, there's another one. Look, there's another one. There's another one. Oh, they got friends? Oh, she's smiling? I can't believe it. They're happy. They seem happy. I'm serious, man. If we can hear the whispers behind the scenes, it's crazy. People really don't get it. They forgot that they think that we're kind of Martians or something, that we're not people, we're not human. They just be looking at us. So, inshallah, let's be a little more lovely with each other. Let's have more of a balance with more love and more encouraging. And I can see that you guys have been doing that. And especially, alhamdulillah, I met the sheikh and he's, mashallah, he has a warm heart. You know, and then we, as youth, as youth, on the other side, for the elders, we have to be more supportive. They've been working so hard, man. So hard. That's why we have this masjid. You know what I mean? Here, masjids all around the world, it's the parents and the, the elders that's been working so hard to have a facility, some place where people can go and make salat. And you know what we do as youngsters? And I know because I've been making the same mistake. We be in them streets. We don't be here to help. And that's why they really be mad, honestly. They were like, man, y'all still running around playing. Y'all don't get it. We have youth. We have to be more supportive of the elders. Let's bring it together. And then that would make them be more encouraging and supportive of us and make them be able to listen back and forth. And this, and when we can do that, oh, subhanAllah, when the youth and the elders can click and be together as one in Jama'at, like we are in Salat, Man, it's subhanAllah, the communities will flourish and more people will enter into Islam because more people will be looking at you as an example and saying, man, you have a relationship with your dad? You have a relate? They don't have, a lot of people don't have this. You guys, you have a, who is that? Is that your father? No, that's, he's like one of my fathers. It's like my uncle, but he's not my uncle. And I have tons of them and they look out for me. And they're encouraging. And they're supportive. And he's like, man, I want to be like y'all. I do what I got to do. That's how, that's, that's Islam. So for the message for the elders and the youth, and let's pay attention. Sometimes as, young, as youngsters, we be in our own world, man. We do. We Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Kitab, watch, watch the kitab. I don't know the correct Arabic pronunciation for it, but either way, it's a big distraction. And sometimes we don't even go to them and say, hey, what are we doing for the masjid? Or what programs are we doing for the masjid? Or, yeah, Sheikh, what can I help with? You know how much ajr do you get for helping? I don't want to put him on the spot. But, I mean, he's only in a position because Allah wrote for him to be in a position. You know what I mean? It's, you don't just be an imam. For the most part, you know, you don't make yourself an imam and then I have a flock of people come pray with me. You know, those, this doesn't, I mean, in a, it doesn't really work out like that. It's only a chosen few that might have masjids like that. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not a lot. And then you wouldn't even really know it. But he's only in a position because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him there and made him be there. And then you all, you, he's sometimes... He feels like he's by himself because sometimes he need the youngsters and the elders is already tired. You know, they have to get some rest because they've been working all day long too. So I'm just saying, I'm just trying to tell us something, some things that I've experienced and things that from the, from the different sheikhs and the different imams that talk to me, I'm grateful, that complain to me, Omar, why you ain't here? You know what I mean? Well, what's going on? Help. And then for my father, when my father was an imam, alhamdulillah, may Allah have mercy on him. And uh, I remember some. he said, you have to be there. Show up. Show up, man. Your presence alone is support if you're there. And then you go a step further. Hey, mom, what can I help do? And then don't look for money or return. So t oh, money is, come on. Money will come. And one of the sheikhs had told me a hadith, he said that 
if you go to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will have the dunya eating out of your hand like pets at the zoo. It's real. We don't have to folk, we don't have to chase dunya. Dunya will come to you. You don't have to chase it. You work, but your your consciousness, your focus have to be on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has to be. Like what can I do? So even if you some of you, I know, some of you might be actors or comedians. Focus on what can you do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one thing, Hollywood, I'm grateful. I'm not in this lifestyle that I want to be famous. I'm grateful. It's only from Allah. And I'm saying, oh Allah, please make me never go back the other way. Because we just don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do this. We don't know. You know what I mean? You can never think like you all right and you got this thing together. You, you just don't know. You really, we, all of us is at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For real. For real, for real. Like, period. We at Allah's mercy. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know. So, I'm, I'm focused on making movies that we can relate to. Stories that we can relate to as Muslim. And I'm not afraid to put Muslim inside of the movie, all throughout the movie. And they're not terrorists. You understand? They're not terrorists. And they're not bad people. Because that's a handful of Christians, Muslims, and Jews as bad people. And we capitalize off of that in Hollywood. But where's our story? Where's how, so like for instance, an example, how this masjid came, how this youth center came to place. That would be a great movie. And at the end of it, you have the imam, he's giving Salat al-Jummah. And all little people come in groves. That's a happy ending. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is stories that how, you know what I mean, they couldn't find enough money and the people didn't want to sell the building and how do we have to expand and how many bake sales and fundraisers we had to do and the upsets and the downsets. That's an inspiring movie. And if we was to watch it, be like, wow, subhanAllah, man, that's, we'd be making dua. We need these kind of movies. We don't always need the, you know what I mean, these, these thugged out gangster movies. Just everybody want to be a thug or a gangster. That's whack. But where's the people that really want to be somebody to help the community and make a change for the community, for the world, to make it a better place? Not just Superman or Hancock. You know what I'm saying? Not just stuff like that. For something for real to remind people about who they really truly are. You are a servant of Allah. You've been blessed by Allah to eat, breathe, sleep, see. You know what I'm saying? We owe Allah. There's nothing that we can do in this world to pay Allah back for everything that he's given us. We can never. We owe Allah. So the minute we start wilding out and thinking that we better than everybody else or I'm more Muslim than anybody else or I'm on the Surat Mustaqim or... Um, you know, I'm better than you because you don't. You're not Muslim, or my skills. I'm the best. This. I'm the best. That. We forgot. Already, we forgot. Allah don't like that. He says it in Surah Al-Luqman. In Surah Al-Luqman, and then Inshallah, we're gonna close because this the surah is very dear to me because it was my father's name, and the the message in it is that it was to the youth he was speaking to his son and when he spoke to his son and he said do not ascribe partners to Allah this is the gravest sin now on no level on no level there's nothing greater than Allah I'm not greater than Allah the skills Allah gave me is not greater than Allah nothing is greater than Allah don't ascribe any partner no celebrity nobody can get you to Jannah or make you rich or make your life better except Allah period nobody can have you a happy family a white picket fence and a happy home except Allah period don't ascribe partners to Allah period and then the message come from about our parents. About our parents, how she went weaning, said weakness through weakness, pain through pain. 
It's nothing that we can do to be able to repay our mothers and our fathers for the works that they give, that they did for bring that Allah used them to bring us into this world. We owe them. It's nothing. So when we start lashing out, talking back, being disrespectful, read Surah Al Luqman. Read Surah Al Luqman and start understanding. My father used to tell me, because I feel you, sometimes feel like Umi be tripping. But my dad used to say, when she's right, she's right. And when she's wrong, she's right. Period. And I didn't understand that for the longest. But it made it, it makes sense from Surah Al Luqman. It doesn't matter. If Umi is wrong sometimes, so what? We don't have to stand there and fight her. We have to just khalas, man, alhamdulillah. It's okay. Because it's nothing that I can do to repay her. Period. And Abby, first three times, I know the father's just like, hey man, what about us? <laughs> and then Abby, you see what I'm saying? And then Abby, and then even Allah goes further on in Surah Al Luqman. Please read it. In Surah, it goes further on when he says, even if she is trying to get you to worship, remember, back to the first thing, if she's trying to get you to ascribe partners beside me, don't obey her with that, but be her companion in kindness and patience because both of your return, all of your return is to me. You still got to be nice. You still don't have the right to be disrespectful. You understand? It's from Allah, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he goes on to say that anything that you do that's in the dark, that's hidden. Because sometimes we, um, we only be Muslim when we're at the youth center, at UMA. And when we out with our friends, ooh, we be wilding out. <laughs> well, Allah says, even inside, if it's in a dark, if it's in a rock, if it's in a dark place hidden inside of a rock, whether it's in the heavens or in the earth, Allah will bring it out. He know already because he is aware, period. He know what we doing even when the imam and the sheikh don't see us. He know. Allah already knows. And then he goes on to say what you do, how you handle things. Establish the salat. Establish the salat. Have, this is a big deal for us as youngsters because we do. We get caught up and we forget about salat because we don't understand the importance of salat. Salat is what's going to ground us. Allah established the salat. You're establishing salat means that your consciousness is about... You don't plan your day around salat. You plan your salat around the day. Your salat has to be... Did I say that right? You plan your, yes, you plan the day around Salat. Excuse me. You have to plan the day around Salat. That means when you're working, okay, when's break? All right, yes, I got to make door right then. You know it. It's on schedule. It's on schedule. I'm going to be in school. As soon as I get a break right there, okay, I'm going to raise my hand and say I got to go to the bathroom just so that I can go and make Salat. Or, inshallah, if Allah gave us strength, then we'd be able to say, excuse me, teacher, I got to go make prayer right quick. I'll be back in two, three minutes. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long for you to make salat. But you have to establish that I need, you know what I mean, I got I to gotta pray. I have to make salat because this is what's going to give you strength, spiritual strength. I promise. It's a salat. It's very important. And then Allah says, when you establish salat, salat, and then, oh, oh, you be patient in conducting all your affairs. You be patient. You patiently stand firm. You patiently hold on. Even when it's rough, this is the best way to command your affairs because you are in charge. You understand? And the people, one of the sheikhs that said, I was listening to him speak, and they was like, oh, and we do do this because I did it myself. Oh, the imam going to do it. The imam is there. The imam is there. He's the imam. He got it. And then Sheikh was like, that's whack. All of you are imams. You're imam of something. You, even if you're just imam of your limbs. 
You're responsible for what your hands do, where your feet go, what your eyes pay in the looking at or staring at, I should say. Yeah, staring. Yeah. What, what, you're an imam of something. You're in charge. So the best way to conduct your affairs is be patient and at times of adversity when it's hard. Be patient. This is the best way to conduct your affairs. And then he says, don't be arrogant. He seals it all up. Don't be arrogant. Don't walk through the earth swelling your cheeks up at people like you all of that. <coughs> Look at him. I got my Prada zone or I got my Detroit hoodie. They don't have one. I'm all that. Don't do that. Allah, then he says, this arrogant boaster, don't walk through the earth like that. This means, I mean, you can't, there's no celebrity in Islam. In Islam, there's no celebrity. There's no, oh, well, oh my God. Oh, I just met him. I just met him. There's none of that in Islam. It's only like, hey, man, that's why I say people make dua for me, man. I don't want you to be like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. I don't want that, man. That's scary, man. I want you to be like, man, humbly love. May Allah have mercy on you and me. Period. Because it, 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 there's no celebrity or no big eyes in Islam. Don't walk through the earth like that. You know, and then he, he, Allah says he doesn't. He specifically said he don't love any arrogant boaster. Verily, he don't love them. You be boasting, be careful. Allah don't like it. And the annoying of all voices is the voice of the donkey. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. You just keep on. That's what it sounds like. The minute, yeah, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this. It sounds. It sounds like. <laughs> It's annoying. That's the example that Allah gives us in the Quran. That's what it sounds like. So the minute you start being like, yeah, yeah, who? I'm Kobe. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm sweet. I'm this. I'm that. Listen what it sounds like. The example that we have in the Quran. <laughs> it's annoying. It's annoying. You know. So please read Surah Al-Luqman. All of you youngsters, read Surah Al-Luqman, man. It's been helping me. I'm still studying. It's a lot that I don't know, of course, and uh, I'm just praying. But just in my experience in Hollywood and the, the works that I'm, you know, that I'm really focused on doing about telling our story, you know, I, I really want to do that. And I really, I believe, Hamdulillah, is going to work even in Hollywood because we have to make dua for them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua for the worst people, man, Abu Jahl, Umar ibn al-Khattab. You know, strengthen the, the ummah with these individuals because they were so mean and bad, you know, to Muslims. And he's like, man, if we could just have them on our side, shoot. And it's the same thing in Hollywood. You know what I mean? You got the Little Waynes, the 50 Cents. They, you know, they're so skillful at what they do, but it's bad, you know, the, the image and the reminders that they're giving people you know, to make them focus on so many other things except Allah. So we make dua for them. It's not a wrap because everybody that's still alive, they have an opportunity. You know what I mean? Everybody that's still living, we care about them. So alhamdulillah, let's make dua for all of them, inshallah. And lastly, um, re uh, study this dua from, uh, this dua from uh, Prophet Sulaiman. Um, it's in Surah Al-Naml because we have skills. And this dua from Prophet Suleiman was that we had to be grateful. Uh, and then, Rabbi awzitni an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayya wa an'amal salihan tarzahu wa adkhilni bi rahmatika fi ibadika salihin. He said, when, you, when he heard the ant speak, he was like, wow. He was reminded, he got skills. That's sweet. He was like, man, I just heard that ant speak. That's sweet. I know what the ant said. <laughs> wow. He smiled. He remembered Allah, that he had the skill. So you smile, and he says, oh, Allah, order me or make me that I'm grateful for the skills or this favor that you have given me and on my parents. And then make me have works, just do works that's, uh, 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 that's good, and that you would put me among the righteous servants. It's sweet, man. So learn that dua with all of your skills. 
youngsters, inshallah. And then come out Monday, inshallah, we're going to have some halal comedy. And then, um, bismillah, may Allah accept from all of us and make dua for me. Yes, please. And, and the brother is there to have, they have the information. Shukran for the... Uh, I appreciate you, the, 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 the warm welcome and this love. Um, shukran, man. Uh, please, may Allah accept from all of us. Thank you very much. Takbir. 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 We thank Brother Omar for being with us. We thank the brothers that brought him here. Wallahi, brothers, I just want to give you a quick reminder. One of the mashaykh that I met just recently, he said a beautiful word, and I want you to remember those words. Just to know that this is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this Islam, this religion is not just my religion, your religion, it is the property of Allah before we belong to this deen. And Allah Azza wa Jal looks after Islam more than what me and you want to look after Islam. And Allah cares about Islam more than what me and you want to care about Islam. He said those beautiful words, he said, Wallahi, if there was any other religion beside Islam that's been fought against the way Islam has been forced against, that religion would have vanished. If there's any religion... Beside Islam, that the attacks on it came, the way the attacks are coming on Islam, that religion will vanish. But Islam is still rising. And Islam continues to rise. And Islam continues to spread. Because this is the deen of Allah and it is the promise of Allah. It is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, سَيَبْلُغَ هَذَا الْأَمْرِ مَا بَلَغَ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارِ That this religion, this matter, will reach everywhere the way day and night had reached everywhere. Who thought that one day that Islam will be spread like this in Australia? Also, also coming from America. Last week I was in Norway, the furthest country up north. And wallahi there was a conference Triple the number of the brothers and sisters that you find here right now. What's making all this? It is the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the deen of Allah that's spreading. It is the deen of Islam that's spreading. As much as they fight it, is the more it increases in strength. As much as the attack, and the more attacks that attack Islam, is the more Islam spreads. And as much as they want to turn people away from Islam, is the more people come into Islam. Why? Because this is the promise of Allah. It is the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah had promised this promise 14 centuries ago, and Allah will fulfill His promise. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoken about that. When he was one man alone, being fought against by everyone, he was sitting next to the Kaaba by himself, while everyone is fighting him, and everyone is warning against him, and everyone is saying that this man is crazy and is majnoon. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam says, whatever you say about me, and no matter how much you fight me, one day Islam will spread everywhere. One day Islam will spread everywhere. And alhamdulillah, Islam is spreading. And Islam will continue to spread with you or without you. Remember that. With you or without you, whether you are part of that train or not. That's why I do say to you, hop on that train and don't miss out. Because if you're going to miss out, you're going to miss out on a lot. So we thank Brother Omar. And this is a great inspiration for us. A great motivation. Motivation to talk for us to know and remember that at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, success is through Islam. Happiness through Islam, wealth is through Islam, comfort and peace is through Islam. Wallah, if you have everything in this dunya and you have no Islam, you've got nothing. And if you have Islam and you've got nothing from this dunya, you've got everything. This is what we need, well, this is what we need to know. This is what we need to acknowledge. And let everyone hear this and understand that the only solution to the disruption of mankind, the only solution to all societies and communities and people is Islam. Nothing else. Because Islam is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyabullah had al amr, ma balagha laylu al nahar, that this deen will reach everywhere the way day and night had reached everywhere. And every house made out of brick and tent it will hear about Islam. This is what the Prophet والسلام, says with an honor of those who seek an honor or the disgrace of those who want disgrace. This is the deal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let this whole world gain, let this whole world assemble, let this whole world gather and fight Islam. At the end of the day, Islam will rise because it's the deen of Allah. So brothers and sisters, take this inshallah as an inspiration for you. We're all, every single one of us, I'll lie to you that I didn't think one day I wanted to be famous, to go to Hollywood, this, that. But at the end of the day, it's all a mirage, a myth. The reality of happiness is through your salah, as the brother said. 
The reality of your happiness is through your obedience to your parents. The reality of your happiness is these gatherings. So look after these gatherings. Once again, I do remind you to attend the function on Monday. And inshallah, tickets have been sold there. And the brother, you're going to speak about it, inshallah. So inshallah, I'll let the brother inshallah, have a quick word about that. Inshallah, support the, sh uh, the brother who came all the way from America. And inshallah, be part of the function. Jazakumullah khair. Pumped up. Well, yeah. Shoot, I'm pumped up. <laughs> <laughs>